Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. I am going live from Canada. I am currently up here taking care of my mom. And ugh, I'm having trouble with my power card this morning. Something's a little wonkety for some reason. Huh. It's just, I was trying to get it to wonder if it will do better if I flip it. You know, uh, I don't know. I do not know what is going on. It keeps wanting to reconnect and connect, and it's making this weird little noise. See? There we go. Um, you know what? Maybe I can just unplug it for now. I don't know what's going on. I'll have to take a look at it afterwards. So anyway, today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and we give it a makeover. And this is a great challenge for everyone to play along with because you can take... Um, any card out of the catalog and do this. But each week we pick a specific card out of the catalog and I'm going to share my mom update at the end of this video um, and I'll do the card part first. So if you wanna stick around and hear all about my um, life, my personal life, um, uh, please do that at the end of the video um, and uh, but I'll do I'll talk about my card first and I'm so thankful to everyone who's joining me today I'm a little bit disconnected uh, from my stamping world right now because of all the things that are happening up here in Canada so I so appreciate that you're willing to check in with me every week on Tuesdays while I get everything sorted all right let's take a look at today's card isn't this cute? So um, this is the Silly Goose stamp set. And I actually liked the Silly Goose stamp set so much. I, I did buy it and I used it on my card, but my card looks a little different. So that is the original card. I think this is a great layout, but when you look at this card, you might have trouble figuring out the dimensions. So we always include a little sketch for you that gives you what the card front is, what um, the different layers are approximately going to be. And you can fiddle with those a little bit and change them up to suit you. So um, as I said, um, this Silly Goose stamp set is just so adorable. And so I also did, <laughs> make sure it's the right way up. I also did the Silly um, Goose uh, uh, as well. Now, um, I'm up here in Canada and I do not have all of my supplies with me here. Um, I am, uh, I had to fly here so I couldn't bring my um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. I don't have my stamp sets, my inks, ev everything. Um, and it, it, it would have been too much to bring everything up that that I needed. Um, so I'm just going to explain to you how I made this card just so um, so that you know how and in the future of course I will actually demonstrate how to make the card but I just wanted to give you a base idea if you are new to stamping. So my card base is um, an 11 inch by four and a quarter piece and I folded it in half at the five and a half inch mark. I scored it first, but you can also fold it. When you score, you get a better line. The fold looks a lot nicer. So I always like to score first. You can do that right on um, a Stampin' Up! paper trimmer if you like. I tend to use my Simply Scored for everything, um, but that's just a preference. Um, then I added a piece of the Country Gingham Designer Series paper. I cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the card front, and I just adhered it right to the card base. I like to kind of use the same colors of my paper. If I'm using the whole sheet on the front, I like to, you know, have that kind of continuous look um, with the same color on the back. Then for this piece, this is a, a sweet a piece of sweet sorbet cardstock, and that was about one and three quarter inches by four and a half inches. And um, on this side right here, I made a mark half an inch up on the one side, and then I cut on the diagonal from the corner 
all the way up to that that pencil mark so you can draw a line if you want to cut um, straighter or you can take it to your trimmer and cut uh, put that um, mark and the end on the trimmer and then just cut it off so that just creates that slanted look and I kind of think it adds like a little fun character to the card because we don't always do we tend to do more rec rectangular layers so this was kind of like a little fun addition to the card um, and uh, everyone this morning um, let me know how you're doing um, I haven't checked in with all of you so um, as I'm explaining this card if you want to let me know how you're doing in the comments please do um, okay and then this white layer is a three inch by three inch piece of basic white and I stamped the goose first and then I stamped the grass three times underneath it and then I went about coloring it. There's not a lot to color on a white goose. And um, so the, the grass, I just went over it. I, I used Momento Tuxedo Black ink. Sorry, I need to readjust my leg here. Um, I used um, Tuxedo Black ink here. I went to the inventory status report this morning. Um, it was actually supposed to be back in stock this week but it has not shown up and now it's showing as um, March 20th so if you don't already have this ink color uh, later on this month you will be able to get it this um, um, if you don't have this and you want a color you can use right now choose a dark color like Knight of Navy is a good alternative uh, for stamping um, but if you want to wait that will be closer to the end of March you should be able to pick up our black um, so then I just colored with Stampin' Blends um, the granny apple green blends for the grass um, and then uh, for the feet and beak I use pumpkin pie for the little hat I use balmy blue for the balloon I use sweet sorbet and I kind of I, I drew a shape see where that white spot is on the balloon right there um, I just kind of drew a shape and then I went around it and then I kind of just you know just left that area that's like the shiny spot the where the light hits in the balloon so I always try and outline myself a, a little spot with the sweet sorbet marker in the middle so that I, I don't forget that I want to leave a spot where the light's going to hit on there and then I just work around and I did work the edges a little bit darker than anything um, than everything else. Um, for the goose you might notice since he's white I wanted to add a little shading so I used my smoky slate marker I don't know if you can see under his neck and wing and body I added some smoky slate light um, just to give the goose a little depth since he was white and I wanted to keep him different than the background um, sometimes I also will take a sponge dauber and create kind of um, I'll use like balmy blue or pool party and I'll daub all around a white animal to make it pop from the background I didn't do that here but I think I'm um, just adding a little shading with a smoky slate adds a lot to the to the goose um, then the greeting, of course I adhered that to the card front. For the greeting, I just stamped it on some basic white and I cut it out, freehand cut, very easily. Um, and um, just, I, I think it works here. This is how there were two original skinny greetings on this card. So it works really well just to kind of continue and do that mode. Um, then there's a black and white gingham bow. I just tied a bow, adhered it with, I adhered it with tear and tape, I can tell. Um, tear and tape helps. Um, I put tear and tape on the, the loops of the bow and that really helps hold it in place. Sometimes I also use a mini glue dot, but this ribbon's a little he heavier, a little bulkier. Um, so I use tear and tape. And then I just sprinkled some iridescent rhinestone jewels on there. They have adhesive backs already. These are one of my favorite embellishments um, because they are very neutral. They go with almost everything. So they pick up the surrounding colors. See how, see how this one, it looks blue. 
because it's reflecting the blue that's around it. Um, so it, that's the cool thing about the iridescent um, jewels is that they reflect everything that's going on. So that's my card for today. Um, I love I love the Saligo stamp set. It's such a cute animal stamp set. And if you know me very well, I always um, buy the cute animal stamp sets because they are just, just uh, adorable. Um, I do have a host coat going this month and I haven't talked about this yet in a video because last month we were still in February. So let me pop that up right now. So this month, what I'm doing for everyone is I have a lot of retired designer series paper and I've done this special um, for several years in a row. I always do it in the spring. And so for every $50 you spend with me in the month of March, you'll get a pack of my retired designer series paper. Now it's not a full pack. I cut it down to six by six and you'll get at least 20 sheets of, of the pack. Um, and if you order $100 in March, you'll get two packs, 150, you'll get three packs and so on. So it's for every $50 you spend, you'll get a pack of my retired designer series paper. Um, as it retires, I always cut my paper down to six by six and I put it, I don't have one here, but I put it in a little cellophane bag and it's really cute. You'll get the original, you'll know what the paper is because I'll, I also cut down the back um, piece of the paper so that you know, um, or if I don't have the back piece, I'll, I'll put a label so you'll know what the original paper was. And it will be retired. It's gonna be like a fun surprise paper. Um, I know my longtime customers, they love this. Um, and um, they they love this uh, um, special I do every spring. Um, the One of the reasons I do this special right now, this time of year, is there's a lot of products transitioning in and out of Stampin' Up. Um, we have, uh, the retirement list for the current spring catalogs and the annual catalogs is coming out at the end of March. Um, so it makes it difficult to choose something in March that's still going to be available to purchase in April uh, to give to you. So that's why I like to do this special this time of year um, because I can, I, I know I have a lot of retired paper to give out. So I know I have a guarantee of what I can give you. Um, and so the other thing that's going on this month is we have new product that is not in a catalog and it's called online exclusives. And I am going to update my uh, website today, my specials page today and give you the links um, for that. Or you can go directly to the online store. Um, the first banner that's coming up right now, most of the time is called online exclusives. So just look for that and click on that and you can see the product. Um, it's um, brand new product. There's a really cute set with rhinos in it. Um, there's a flower bundle. Actually, the rhino is also a bundle. The f there's a flower bundle. There's a really cute um, another bundle with a leaf um, in it. So there's some really cute stuff and I haven't, I have actually ordered some of it, but I haven't had a chance to play with it yet because um, I, I placed an order and it will be arriving in Boston and I'm still up here in Canada. So um, when I get back, I will definitely be making projects with it. Just right now, I just don't have my product in front of me. So not so easy to do. Um, so I would, um, you know, check those out and I'll, I'll update my specials page and everything. So that brings me to my uh, Brenda update. What's happening with me here? Um, I am still up here in Canada and um, it was uh, a busy week last week with my mom. We had a couple of key uh, doctor's appointments and um, so uh, a little difficult week um, to be sure um, on Friday, my mom had her appointment with her oncologist and she's been um, fighting multiple myeloma for about 10 years now. Um, it is um, uh, multiple myeloma, I guess most people say it's not curable um, and she's kind of at the end of the line of what they can do uh, for her. Um, her numbers haven't really um, 
been been changing. Um, they've I think they've been worsening slightly, um, and uh, her kidneys are very very close to to failing. Um, she's um, very close to having to go on dialysis and. Um, Personally, she has not. She does not want to go on to dialysis. It's that's a very personal choice. She has actually been on dialysis before, so she knows what it all entails. It's um, you may. I don't know if any of you are on dialysis or have family members who have been. It is, um, you know, it it does take up a, a good chunk of your life, and and then if you also have cancer treatments um, and everything else. Um, and given the fact that, um, you know, things, things aren't really improving with the, the cancer treatment, um, my mom um, has decided to stop um, the cancer treatment. Um, the good news is actually, um, she has been doing a lot um, better since I've been here, uh, like on the weekend. Um, she has improved um, a little bit. Um, she's now able to, I'm still kind of watching her, but she's able to um, use the walker to get to like the washroom and everything. Uh, previously, I had to actually walk with her on the walker because um, last Friday, she almost fell again. I caught her and <laughs> lowered her to the ground and that was a little scary. Um, so I'm still really trying to watch her and make sure that she's safe. Um, that one of the reasons I came out here was because she fell. Um, she didn't um, break anything, but she bruised herself up. And so I just don't want her to fall again. And so we're doing like everything we can uh, to keep her safe. So my mom is going on palliative care. And if you, you might know what that is. And, but if you don't, palliative care means you no longer treat the illnesses, you just kind of treat and help um, the person uh, be, you know, pain free and to, you know, just be as, as good as they can be. Um, people can live on palliative care for a while. It's not, it's not like um, the person or my mom is going to die immediately or anything like that. But um, it, it does kind of mean that you know, if if there's, you know, something catastrophic that happens, um, they're no longer going to do, um, you know, like life-saving treatment, like they wouldn't try and restart her heart or something like that, because those are, those are her wishes. Um, and, you know, given the fact that, you know, she was in us so much pain in the past, her pain is now gone um, but she still is dealing with um, some nausea and so anyway um, that's where we're at with my mom and um, we're, I'm t trying to take good care of her um, with the palliative care um, team I'm still not yet in contact with them that was just set up on Friday so I have yet to hear from them so we're gonna get things set up for my mom um, I think she can um, somewhat live independently um, for a while like she has improved to the point where I think that um, we can get her so that she's you know able to move around in her condo I don't know that she's going to get back to driving again um, but I think she's going to have a little bit of independence so that's where I'm trying to get her to I'm trying to get um, we have an occupational therapist coming in this week to uh, check out her place to make sure it's safe for her to get around. Um, we're just doing all of those kinds of things um, for her. So um, for now, I am just hanging tight. Um, I think I'm going to be up here, um, if everything holds steady, um, another week or two, and then I'll come back. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, if you uh, did earn a gift from me in February, um, I will be sending those out. I have not forgotten about you. The gems have been ordered. Um, they are um, being sent to Boston. And um, when I get back, those gifts will be sent in, in the mail. So um, don't, don't think I'm not going to uh, give up my February gifts. I'm 
absolutely good for them. Um, I I just can't do it right now because I'm I'm too far away. Um, my brain is so scattered. It is is not very easy to even do the most basic work here. Um, I'm just trying to help my mom um, navigate some things like taxes are coming up. So I'm helping her um, gather that stuff. Um, finally, because she feels well enough. Um, I wasn't able to do that the first uh, week and a half. She was just not in a place where she had the energy to do that but on the weekend I noticed she was doing a little better so I thought you know let's gather her her tax information I know that sounds rather maybe we should do something much more fun but I think um, sometimes things like that can stress a person out too so it's nice if someone's there to help them get that stuff together and then I can drop the stuff off um, with her tax person and, and get it taken care of so um, that's what um, my goal is just to get things going um, her laptop is not connecting to the wi-fi so i've got that to do there's just a, like a little list of things that i need to accomplish for her um, and hopefully she can continue to be um, stable um, and um, that she can continue to enjoy her life um, hopefully you know maybe the not being on cancer treatment will actually give her body a little bit of rest and she'll have a little bit of a rebound um, because that's it also damages her her kidneys you know it helps in some aspects but it damages her kidneys so maybe she'll get a bit of a reprieve i hope that's the case so um that's my my update for all of you um send me an email if you have any questions i'm a little slow in getting back to emails i'll admit but i i'm getting back to them i think i've gotten most of the older ones cleared out so now i'm just dealing with all of the newer ones so i'm going to just read your comments real quick good morning everyone i see mary janine kimberly marty ellie so nice to see all of you um janine says uh everything's hanging in there in um indiana awesome good morning deborah marty said she's had sunshine in pittsburgh um, that always makes things better. Awesome. We have like pretty nice weather here this morning. The other thing is um, it's really, really hard to get up in the morning and do a live at 7 a.m. Because normally I'm doing it at 10 a.m. at my place. And uh, I woke up this morning at 5.30 a.m. And because I'm on Pacific Standard Time right now. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't even like think about opening my eyes now. So I let the alarm go off and off and off. And finally, I managed to uh, move at six. So it's, it's tough being on a different time zone and having to uh, adjust to that. Like I still, I still can't, still can't deal. I'm so used to now being on the Eastern time zone. So it's kind of weird. Um, uh, Ellie says, um, I'm so glad you've been able to spend this time with your mom. Love to you both. Thank you. Mary sends love to and hugs. Thank you. And Marty says, I'm such a good daughter. I, you know what? I wish I were an even better daughter. I am not a great nurse. Like I, I am, but I'm not like I'm, I'm, I'm not, ugh. I, I'm like, I'm a doer. So like I want to fix things and and so sometimes things can't be fixed like with people and I, I find that that frustrating but right now there's enough stuff to do so that my brain is still um, um, going like I am not you know how some people love babies and love to hold them and um, I'm not that kind of person I like older kids I like when they are active and I can do stuff with them um, so I'm, I'm like I'm not like a quiet sit by your bedside sort of person I'm like give me a list of things to do and I'll accomplish them uh, kind of person so and I guess everyone's different and we should do our strengths and and I wish I was like more of that kind of person I think though when I need to be I'm I'm there just as much as as she needs me so I'm hoping I'm fulfilling that role but I feel don't you always feel like you're not quite measuring up that's that's how I I sometimes feel like I I feel like I just can't quite be 100% so I am just hanging in there and um anyway good morning Holly 
um, Janine says, you're a natural fixer and you're a matter of fact kind of girl. Yeah, I guess I am. It's my mom who raised me, so, and my dad too, um, but I certainly have a lot of my mom in me, so maybe I'm just the perfect person to take care of my mom because that's how she probably took care of me too. Although I, I do think my mom is a better caregiver than me. Like she does have that, that natural doting nature. She does love to hold babies and, um, but yeah, not, not, not me. I'm, I'm even more practical, right? So, um, Holly said hugs. Thank you. Um, Marty said getting things done is great. I'm sure your mom appreciates it. Yeah, you know what? I think so. I think she's going to be really happy if I can get her um, computer fixed. That's my husband and I were um, working on it last night on Zoom. And um, we now know that, you know, the, the one problem is just not connecting to the internet. I think it's um, uh, a network um, problem with her computer specifically because I can get on no problem so um, I don't know exactly what we are going to do um, we, we have one thing that we're going to try so that that will be our next step um, Janine said it's a German kind of thing too yeah you know yes kind of that yeah you taking care of um, my mom is German and so um, well, she's German Canadian. She has her Canadian citizenship, um, but definitely, I grew up in a German household. My dad was also German, so it it is there is a bit of a of that kind of I don't know if it's like sort of different kind of sort of toughness or whatever. Um, but um, I don't know. My mom, I think, was was more doting and caring than me, but I don't know. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fabulous day. I will be doing another live next Tuesday. And I will let you know um, if and when. Well, I will be coming back. Not if, it when. When I'm coming back to um, Boston and getting everything back to normal. All right, everyone. Uh, take care until then. Uh, check out those online exclusives. If you're ordering, use my host code um, so you can get that paper reward. And I will uh, see you all next week. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.